Good afternoon. My name is Samuel, and in collaboration with Dylan and Zhao, it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to describe our work. A 23 megawatt data center is all you need. Accurate forecasting is valuable. From domains spanning battle outcomes to precipitation now casting, humans have long looked to hippotomancy and overly cheerful weather presenters to assess the future fate of their empire and determine whether they need an anorak for their afternoon dog walk. Two key themes have emerged in prior work. Passive prediction frameworks have sought to leverage historical trends and hardware laws with hints of exponential nominative determinism. Active prediction frameworks, pioneered by Dennis Gabor, instead advocate actively inventing the future. Note, however, that empirical scaling laws lack a rigorous theoretical foundation, while actively inventing the future sounds exhausting. And honestly, just waiting for Moore's law is much easier. Traditional approaches to passive technology forecasting adopt an empirical view. This approach benefits from data, has been eerily accurate so far, and encourages a healthy, bullish outlook, but lacks statistical rigour. By contrast, our forecast employs the central limit theorem to provide a theoretical underpinning to our trajectory. We note that in addition to deriving greater statistical gravitas, our trajectory benefits from consistency with known physical laws and is overall more visually soothing. Perhaps most importantly, it benefits from a finite maximum, allowing us to predict with absolute certainty that technology will peak at 3.07am on the 20th of July 2032. To understand the reasons for our decline, we began by enumerating plausible causes. A butterfly wing flap in downtown Tirana in 1658. The premature death of Poincaré in 1912. The inexplicable density of roundabouts in Milton Keynes in 2022. Yet none seemed fully adequate. We next turned to science fiction for clues. In desperate search of relief from Slack notifications, many technologists may turn to SOMA and wireheading. However, while damaging, our modelling suggests that a significant fraction of the engineering community have already submitted to the iron rule of focus mode and are likely immune to these sirens, though they are hungry, thanks to repeatedly missing group lunch invitations. To understand how the last bastion of hungry and resilient focus moders too could fall, we trained a transformer to predict future events from temporarily curated Wikipedia articles. We learned that by 2031, Humanity has achieved an impressive new state-of-the-art Gini coefficient in which 99.99999% of all wealth belongs to three humans and an adorable Labrador named Molly. It is into this society that on December 31st, 2031, an anonymous game designer releases a self-learning reboot of the 2013 mobile classic Flappy Bird. We don't know who, but our guess is Sikbovic legend Dr. Tom Murphy the Seventh. To maximise engagement, the game soon re explores reward hacking, and players cannot stop playing, lest they lose their progress, which cannot be saved. The three richest humans are incapacitated. Capital flows grind to a halt. Silicon foundries fall silent. In shock, the world turns to Molly. She wants to help, but only after walkies, and she might have forgotten her BTC passwoof. Starved of donations and revenue, Wikipedia and Stack Overflow servers are powered down, and since no one can remember the command to undo recent Git commits, technology begins its freefall. To plan ahead, as required by our grant application, we begin by noting that modern brain scale language models represent not only a great demo and a potential existential threat to humanity, but also open up a clear attack surface on the English spelling kingdom. Our plan is to ensure that 51% of the internet training data used for future spell checkers follows our spelling preferences. To this end, we propose HMGAN, a model that rephrases text to maximize their similarity to blog posts penned by Elizabeth II. We assume, by tenuous extrapolation, that global data centers will use 227 terawatt hours in 2032. By this date, Almost all written English content online will be unintentional bot-to-bot -bot conversation between friendly chatbot sales assistants. 
training corpora for future spell checkers will be curated from their transcripts. By entering these numbers into the calculator app on an aging iPhone, we find that a 23 megawatt data center can run HMGAN fast enough to outchat the chatbots. See the paper for the grisly details. Finally, we ask, how can we design a timeless spell checker, assuring us top position on papers with code and the mass market adoption required for our positive feedback loop? We propose a diachronic spell checker trained on Twitter, which had the unforeseen side effect of converting some words to colored boxes, possibly as a result of our data augmentation. To stay relevant, our timeless spell checker predicts both future language and events, avoiding staleness issues. We first validate our ideas by considering a 51% attack in an idealized setting, the British bin coloring problem, or BBCP. The BBCP is a mathematical problem that is more practical than graph coloring and more general than bin packing, which can be described as follows. On Wednesday nights or your local bin collection night, the objective is to wheel out the color of bin that causes maximum mischief to your neighbors. Remember, wheeled out bins of the wrong color will not be collected under any circumstances. You have three choices, black unfiltered, blue recycling, and green garden waste. To avoid social tension, almost all neighbors will copy their neighbor's bin color rather than check the local government website. You may collaborate with others to cause mischief, but you must account for upstanding citizens who will always wheel out the right bin color. This problem might be NP hard. It is unquestionably environmentally significant. We consider an instance of the BBCP for the residents of Grantchester, a picturesque village in Cambridgeshire. We employed HM Gand to craft royal entreatments to wheel out the blue colored bins on a green bin Wednesday then sent leaflets to this effect to a subset of residences. We then wheeled out our blue bin and waited. We note that a combination of stochastic upstanding citizen locations and wheel out race conditions complicated our analysis, leaving us in some doubt as to whether a 51% bin color majority would achieve our desired ends. To counter this intractability, we adopted a strategy of hoping it would work. Unfortunately, the results were unpromising. In our enthusiasm, we had failed to wait until the 27th of March. We therefore missed the transition to British Daylight Saving Time, and it was too dark for our neighbors to determine our bin color, and thus they were uninfluenced. We also learned that they do not take kindly to unsolicited leaflets and are, by now, quite frankly, tired of our shenanigans. By backtesting on historical data, we found that the events successfully predicted or caused by our model include quarantinis, but not maskni. More concerningly, and despite passing both of our unit tests, our model still insists on autocorrecting our own use of color to color. Plausible causes of this shortcoming include the significant challenge of overturning the st spelling status quo. Indeed, our own grammar checker confidently asserted that the odds were against us the difficulty of controlling large language models, and the fact that we still don't really understand what the detach function does in PyTorch. We now conclude with a summary of our contributions. We have presented a rigorous statistical prediction of the future, providing the precise time and date on which technology will peak, 3.07 a.m. on the 20th of July, 2032. We have also provided tools for myriad forms of linguistic lock-in, one avenue for future work will explore a new time and date scheme based on standard deviations from the Gaussian technology curve. However, further research is still required to quantify whether the 2 to 1 mapping from years to standard deviations will be problematic. Thank you all very much for your valued attention. We also thank in particular Almut Sofia Koke for her wisdom. Please see our GitHub repo for a permanent notice that code is coming soon.